In a bold move that's raising eyebrows across the space industry, Europe is taking its biggest swing yet at challenging SpaceX's dominance. But here's where things get interesting. While European leaders craft ambitious plans for a new space alliance, one of their own companies is making headlines for an entirely different reason. They're hitching a ride on a SpaceX rocket. The irony doesn't stop there. Just as Europe announces its strategy to break free from SpaceX dependency, we're seeing a fascinating shift in the U.S. military launch landscape. The Space Force is projecting something that seemed impossible just a few years ago. ULA might actually outpace SpaceX in government launches this year. But there's more to this story than meets the eye. 2025 is shaping up to be a pivotal year in the space race. We're watching Europe navigate a critical crossroads, trying to maintain its independence in space while simultaneously relying on the very company they're aiming to compete with. The Ariane 6 rocket, Europe's great hope for the future, sits ready for its maiden flight after years of delays. Meanwhile, SpaceX continues to extend its lead, launching more rockets in 2024 than the rest of the world combined. Today, we're pulling back the curtain on Europe's ambitious plan to challenge SpaceX's supremacy. We'll explore why some of the biggest names in European aerospace are joining forces, examine the unique challenges they're facing, and analyze whether this alliance has what it takes to compete in today's rapidly evolving space market. This is Elon Musk 24 Hours. Let's dive right in. The story of Europe's space ambitions reads like a classic tale of pride and perseverance. For decades, the continent that gave us Galileo and Copernicus led the commercial space launch industry. The Ariane rockets were the gold standard, launching satellites for customers worldwide from their tropical launch pad in French Guiana. But that era of European dominance now feels like ancient history. As SpaceX revolutionized the industry with reusable rockets and dramatically lower launch costs, Europe watched its market share crumble. The final blow came when their reliable Ariane 5 rocket retired in 2023, leaving a void that the delayed Ariane 6 couldn't fill. The pain of this transition became even more acute when European flagship missions, including their own Galileo navigation satellites, had to turn to SpaceX for launches. It was a moment of deep reflection for European space leaders. Their space autonomy, built over half a century, was slipping away. But now, in a dramatic turn of events, Europe is fighting back. Airbus, the aerospace giant that builds everything from commercial airliners to military satellites, has quietly been working with Goldman Sachs to forge a new kind of space company. This isn't just another government contractor. It's designed to be Europe's answer to SpaceX, built from the ground up for the commercial space age. The stakes couldn't be higher. As we speak, Leonardo Spa of Italy and Thales of France are in talks to join this ambitious alliance. These companies bring decades of expertise in spacecraft systems, satellite technology, and advanced electronics. But here's where it gets interesting. The alliance isn't just about building rockets. They're planning something far more comprehensive, a complete space ecosystem that could handle everything from satellite manufacturing to space debris removal. The strategy makes sense on paper. By combining their strengths, these European companies could theoretically match SpaceX's vertical integration, controlling everything from rocket engines to spacecraft software. They're even taking a page from Elon Musk's playbook, focusing on commercial viability rather than depending entirely on government contracts. But there's a catch, and it's a big one. The most crucial players in European space launch are notably absent from these discussions. Ariane Space, the company that operates Europe's rockets, and rocket factory Augsburg, an innovative German startup, haven't signed on. It's like trying to start a football team without any strikers. These companies possess the actual rocket-building expertise that any serious SpaceX competitor would need. Even more concerning is the state of European launch capabilities. The Ariane 6, Europe's next-generation rocket, has been plagued by delays. Its maiden flight is scheduled for 2025. But industry insiders whisper about technical challenges that could push the second launch even further into the future. Meanwhile, SpaceX completed 138 successful launches in 2024 alone, more than all other launch providers combined. This disparity becomes even more striking when we look at the technology gap. While SpaceX routinely lands and reuses its rocket boosters, 
sometimes flying the same booster 10 times or more, Europe is still working on their first reusable rocket concepts. The cost implications are staggering. SpaceX can offer launches at prices that European rockets simply can't match, even with government subsidies. But just when it seems like all hope is lost for European space ambitions, an unexpected bright spot emerges. A small European company called Atmos Space Cargo is about to launch something revolutionary, not on a European rocket, but aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9. Their Phoenix capsule represents a completely new approach to bringing cargo back from space, using an innovative inflatable heat shield that could change the game for space station resupply missions. The Phoenix project reveals both the challenge and the opportunity facing European space companies. While they still rely on SpaceX for launches, they're pushing boundaries in other areas. The capsule's unique inflatable atmospheric decelerator serves as both heat shield and high-velocity parachute. Technology that even SpaceX hasn't mastered yet. This mission carries more than just cargo. It carries the hopes of proving that European innovation is still alive and well. The capsule will house four groundbreaking experiments, including a radiation detector from the German Aerospace Center and a cutting-edge bioreactor developed in the UK. After spending three hours in orbit, Phoenix will attempt something never before achieved with inflatable technology, a controlled re-entry and splashdown in the Indian Ocean. The timing of this mission couldn't be more symbolic. As European leaders debate the formation of their SpaceX competitor, Atmos Space Cargo is demonstrating a different path forward, one focused on finding unique niches in the space economy rather than trying to beat SpaceX at its own game. Meanwhile, across the Atlantic, another fascinating story is unfolding. The U.S. Space Force has released projections showing that United Launch Alliance, ULA, could launch more military missions than SpaceX in 2025. At first glance, this seems like proof that SpaceX's dominance isn't absolute. But dig deeper and you'll find a more complex reality. ULA's projected 11 launches for 2025 represent a backlog of delayed missions from their National Security Space Launch, Phase 2 contract. These launches were supposed to be spread out over several years, but got pushed back due to delays in developing their new Vulcan rocket. SpaceX, meanwhile, has been steadily completing their contracted launches on schedule. The situation with ULA serves as a cautionary tale for Europe's Space Alliance ambitions. ULA was formed by aerospace giants Boeing and Lockheed Martin, companies with far more resources and experience than the proposed European Alliance members. Yet even with their combined might and guaranteed government contracts, ULA has struggled to keep pace with SpaceX's innovation and efficiency. The challenges facing ULA have become so severe that Boeing and Lockheed Martin are reportedly considering selling the company. This development sends shockwaves through the industry. If these American aerospace titans can't make their joint venture work, what hope does a European alliance have? But perhaps that's the wrong question to ask. The real lesson from both ULA's struggles and Atmos Space Cargo's innovation might be that trying to create a European SpaceX is missing the point. The space industry of 2025 is fundamentally different from the one Elon Musk entered two decades ago. Success might not come from trying to replicate SpaceX's path, but from finding new paths entirely. This brings us back to Europe's critical decision point. The continent faces a choice between two visions of its space future. The first is the Grand Alliance strategy, pooling resources to create a vertically integrated space company that can theoretically compete with SpaceX across the board. The second is a more distributed approach, encouraging companies like Atmos Space Cargo to develop innovative technologies that fill crucial gaps in the global space ecosystem. The reality is that Europe might need both approaches. The Alliance could provide the infrastructure and launch capabilities necessary for space autonomy, while innovative startups push the boundaries of space technology. But time is running out. With every passing month, SpaceX extends its lead launching more rockets, deploying more satellites, and pushing humanity closer to becoming a multi-planetary species. Europe's space industry stands at a crossroads, but unlike previous pivotal moments in its history, it can't afford to take years to decide its path forward. The space race of the 2020s moves at SpaceX speed, 
and Europe must adapt or risk becoming a footnote in humanity's greatest adventure. As we watch these events unfold, one thing becomes crystal clear. The next chapter in the story of space exploration won't be written by those who try to replicate past successes, but by those who dare to imagine and create the future. Whether Europe's bold new strategy succeeds or fails, it marks a recognition of this fundamental truth. In space as on Earth, standing still is not an option. What we're witnessing isn't just a business competition or a technological race. It's a battle for the future of space exploration itself. Europe's response to space at WEX's dominance will help determine whether humanity's journey to the stars will be led by a single company or shaped by a diverse array of players, each contributing their unique strengths to our shared cosmic destiny. As these developments continue to unfold, one question remains at the forefront. Can Europe's space industry transform itself quickly enough to remain relevant in the rapidly evolving commercial space age? The answer won't come from boardroom strategies or political declarations, but from the dedication, innovation, and determination of thousands of European engineers, scientists, and entrepreneurs working to keep their continent's space dreams alive. The space industry stands at a fascinating crossroads. Europe's bold strategy to challenge SpaceX represents more than just business competition. It's a testament to humanity's enduring desire to reach for the stars. While SpaceX continues to dominate with unprecedented launch frequencies and revolutionary reusability, Europe's innovative approaches in areas like the Phoenix capsule show that there's still room for groundbreaking developments from unexpected players. What do you think about Europe's chances? Will their new alliance strategy succeed in challenging SpaceX's dominance? Or should they focus on carving out specialized niches in the space market? Share your thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to hear your perspective on this pivotal moment in space history. If you're as passionate about space exploration and innovation as we are at Elon Musk 24 hours, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. We're committed to bringing you the latest developments in space technology, launch updates, and industry analysis every single day. This is Elon Musk 24 hours, where space exploration meets innovation and history is made with every launch. See you in the next video.